Hey, I'm Tom from Shaw. I'm an applications engineer here. And today we're going to talk about acoustics in boardroom type environments. Boardrooms are designed for two different uh, applications. Firstly, communication, and secondly, collaboration. On the collaboration side, we need to have people feeling nice and open and relaxed and kind of welcome to ideas coming in. And to create those kind of environments, we like to have big, bright, open, airy space with lots of glass, high windows, and no kind of confinedness in there. These environments tend to help people have more creative ideas. The problem is that these surfaces often have really, really quite stark acoustics, like they're bright, very, very reflective, and tend to not make an acoustically good uh, area in which you can conduct communication, particularly for a video conference call. This gets particularly tricky when the microphone gets placed further away from people. The further you place the microphone from the sound source, the more room acoustic you'll pick up as well. We can divide the type of sound a microphone picks up into three different categories. Firstly, direct sound. Secondly, early reflections. And lastly, reverberations. Direct sound, as it suggests, is the sound that comes directly from the sound source and straight into a microphone without bouncing off any walls at all. Early reflections are categorised as sound that reflects off something but still enters the mic within 50 milliseconds of the direct sound first arriving at the microphone. These sounds tend to be perceived by the brain as not uh, really making any difference to the sound at all. The sounds after 50 milliseconds after the original incident sound arrives at the microphone are considered to be reverberations. This is when sound can start to get quite tricky and quite tricky to listen to as well. The sound for, for a reverberation could enter the microphone bouncing off just one wall or maybe off the wall behind me, the wall over there and the table or any kind of number of, of channels across the room. The longer the reverberation time of the room, the harder it gets to hear people. The consonants start to smear together and it becomes incredibly difficult to hear exactly what somebody is saying. The shape of the room can contribute to the reverberation type as well, particularly with two parallel walls. There are two types of echo that happen with two parallel walls. Firstly, you get flutter echo, and secondly, standing waves. I've just moved into one of the shore stairwells here. As you can see, it's a very uh, stark area. There's very little soft furnishing. The only soft furnishing we have is the minimal carpet on the stairs. That results in quite a reverberant space indeed. Flutter echo happens when any sound bounces off one wall, then the other wall, and carries on until it runs out of energy. I'm going to demonstrate this now by clapping a couple of times. I appreciate I'm exacerbating the issue there by producing quite a loud frequency uh, when, when clapping to, to bring out the issue. But that flutter echo is happening all the time, even when I'm speaking now. And if you were having those kind of issues uh, in a boardroom or video conference call, it would make uh, listening to the audio coming from this room really quite tricky. The other effect two parallel walls can have on room acoustics is something called standing waves. The effect of standing waves on the room acoustic is that some frequencies will be amplified and some other frequencies will be attenuated. There are also three different types of standing wave. Axial, which is when the standing wave bounces off just two uh, surfaces that are parallel to each other. The next type is called tangential, when the, the standing waves bounce off not two, but now four different surfaces in the room. The last type is called oblique, when the standing wave will bounce off all six surfaces in the room together. All of these are likely to um, resonate at different frequencies and should be considered when equalising a room. Diffusion, as it suggests, doesn't attenuate any frequencies but just scatters them or diffuses them across the room. So particularly with flutter echo, rather than the echo going from one side to the other and back to the other like this, what we tend to do is put some, some kind of uneven surface on one wall so rather than acting like a mirror, it's acting like um, a diffusing cloth. This helps to reduce the direct flutter echo and can often result in quite a nice sounding effect. The other treatment type is absorption. Simply absorbing the sound energy within the room. If you start with a really, really wide open room with less hard surfaces anywhere, putting any kind of soft furnishings in there will really, really help the room. In terms of the typical treatments that are available, you'd usually buy some kind of either foam or fiberglass panels. The thicker you go from like a two inch to a three inch panel, the lower the frequencies that it will absorb and attenuate as well. The panels could be mounted on the wall like this, 
You could also can, uh, hang or suspend the panels a few inches or maybe a foot or so off the ceiling. Alternatively, acoustically treated uh, ceiling tiles are available as well. Or just putting something as simple as a piece of carpet in the room, even people in the room will make a, a room much less acoustically reflective. Every time I say a word, imagine that my voice is just kind of emanating a million rubber balls out into the room at once. One of those will go straight into the microphone. Many of them will bounce off a wall, a ceiling, the floor, the table, and then into the microphone. How can we stop most of those rubber balls from entering the microphone after the original direct one hit the microphone first? Simple. Put up some acoustic treatment in there to make sure the room is nice and dead. Think about how you'd stop a rubber ball. Think about how best you can stop the audio bouncing around these reverberant boardrooms.